Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watery from Hold to Run. Today, I want to show you how I implemented my custom JSON object compiler in ServerDoc API testing application. Like so, we have JSON object in our text editor. We make a quick check. There's an error. Obviously, we are missing a comma in this point. Let's try again. Wow. All our string objects, integers are in cor correct place. And we even have the indentations correctly in here. This is a really handy feature, especially when you're dealing with mobile devices. And uh, writing text can be a gruesome task, especially for such a structured object such as JSON. Okay, before we continue, let's take a look. Let's make a quick overview of our demonstration. We're using ServerDoc application, which is API testing application. And if you want, like what I do, you can go into my homepage, holtrun.com and check it out. You can see the applications in here, what I have done. Or if you like them, go directly into Google Play and you can download and test them yourself. I release applications under Hold to Run and you can find them in here. Let's start. Okay, so how did we implement that JSON compiler function into our ServerDoc application? In the code, I'm using Kotlin environment, and of course, this will invol involve JSON. So, in the graphical, we'll be building our editor, text editor, as a composable graphic object, and everything that we need will be in here. It's been annotated as a composable for the Jetpack Compose. We also need a custom object, which I have created data class, my JSON object. It will hold the JSON string and an error boolean value if we detect wrong syntax. And in our file tool, we have coded this custom format string to JSON function, which actually is our compiler in this case. So this function validates what the user inputs and we return valid or non-valid string back to the user. Very handy and cool. So let's take a look at the application first to make an actual demonstration. Here we are running 10 second cycle for that JSON object, which is querying our backend. There is a database called MongoDB, which holds, holds this object and it returns it to us with values of count zero, timestamp zero, and we have an ID of body X, just a random JSON object. And now we will script new values into that JSON and set it into our backend. And we'll be using the JSON compiler of the server doc to help us do this. Let's open our post request here. In our post request, we can send a JSON body object. This here is our text editor, which you can see actually as our Jetpack Compose code object, graphical object in here, text field. So, if you're not familiar with JSON, it's gonna need to be built inside curly braces. So let's make a quick check there. It just returned curly braces, but there's no object inside this. 
So we have to uh, send that same JSON object into our backend. It had three values. First, it had an ID. So let's write ID. The ID was string object of body X, if I recall correctly. Then it had an ti a timestamp, timestamp key. And this time we'll just add 1000. It doesn't make any matter for that real, if it's real time value, we just change it. Then we had a count. And for the count, we just add 99. Okay, let's try this. Oh, we had an error. Again, we are missing the comma value in here. Let's add the comma between the new key and a value. There. We just return perfect JSON object from our code compiler and it helped us a lot. You can see all the key string values are set correctly. The actual string value of that key is correct. Integers are correct like so. Perfect. So what are we doing in our code? So let's take a look at first start from the graphical objects. So you need to know a little bit about Jetpack Compose graphics. I'm not going to explain how it works, but uh, on the surface side, I will try to explain a little bit. So the user actually inputs the value in here, which we can catch from the item. So let's see, we're listening the item and the actual string value, what the user is inputting, and it, 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 we give it a new variable of new text. This will be handled as a mutable state, so whenever it is changed, refreshed, our graphics in here will be refreshed. Good. Then we will have our text field object, which handles the visualization of the strings into the text editor. And in here, we just give it the value of the string and it'll be displayed for the user. We don't do any magical stuff in the text field editor. We just display what our compiler returns to us. Okay, good. But then we have this JSON compiler button in here. This is our function that actually detects if the code is correct or not. And if it will be accepted at the end of the day in your backend, for instance, like so. So what are we doing in here? The user has now input the value into the text editor. So when user clicks our compiler button, quick check JSON in here, we will insert that actual value from the item as well as in here as a new text into our string to JSON compiler function. This is custom function that I programmed. So in here, if the editor is still empty, we haven't read any actual values, we will just return empty curly braces back to the user, just to indicate how the JSON object should be started. Pretty simple. And we also will save the error state, no errors. Like, like I showed you, we have our custom JSON object, which will hold the string value and the state of error. Good. So then we return the value. If 
the text field is yet empty. If not, then we will use JSON parser. This is JSON tool. It is an existing JSON object that we can use. It has an extension function to parse any string. So in here we will pass our user's text if, it con if the editor contains any text. And it will return an actual JSON element. Then we will insta instantiate JSON builder and we definitely want to set pretty printing because the pretty print will make sure that our displayed format of JSON is readable. We get the uh, correct set of indentations and the structure visually. Then we will update the string to be returned with our JSON and format our JSON element into JSON. And then we will return our result as my JSON object. So in here we instantiate our JSON class object to hold two values, string and boolean value. Good. Now, how did we get the errors from this? The JSON parser, to be specific, parsing strings, will throw us JSON parse exception and syntax exception. Pretty cool. We can use these to catch if the user input is actually valid for JSON object or not. We just have to catch them, like so. And if we detect any errors during the JSON compilation, we're just gonna return back the text, the original text, which the editor holds, and set JSON error true in our custom JSON object, which can hold these two values. Cool. Now we have our code compiler ready. Let's go back to the Jetpack Compose graphics. So in here, our custom JSON compiler just returned us a string. Sorry, my custom JSON object. From this class custom object, we can update the string value of the text editor back into our item, which will be the item to hold any data that the server dog allows us to configure for that specific item. We will also update the Jetpack Compose mutable state of string, which is the actual text to be displayed in the user interface. And then we will also update the error state for the JSON compiler, which is also Jetpack Compose's mutable state of Boolean value. Whenever any of these changes, we will just refresh the graphical interface through this my composable of my body raw text and redisplay the new status of that editor. And then we will just save our server doc item and broadcast the updates into our code. So I'm not going to go deeper into my overall application, but you probably will not need this specific function in your own daily work. Okay. So all we have to do now is to finalize our post function into backend and it'll prove that this actually work. So now we have our finalized JSON body object in here in our post query. And in here 
we are still requesting that JSON object from our backend within 10 second cycle and we will update it now. There, it just responded success. And pretty soon we get the new values from the back end. Cool. Our JSON compiler is working perfectly. That's all I wanted to show, show you today. And if you like what I do, you can go into my homepage holtorun.com and check it out. All applications are in here with short intros. Or you can go directly into Google Play and try them out. You can see my applications in here as well as the Serverdog API testing. I release applications under the name Hold to Run. We'll be back.